Hello friends and welcome to Jocelyn's Twilight Years, how to be a really, really, really old model. I am speaking to you this month from Madeira, where I am doing a location trip, which I'm sharing with my husband, shooting a combination of content for Estrade Elegance, for my OnlyFans site, and my own custom videos, which will be going up for sale on many vids and clips for sale. But I'm here to talk to you, as always, about a subject dear to my heart and of late it's become particularly dear to my heart. Now when I first started this channel I made a video about how to neutralise mansplainers and I thought at the time that I had said everything that needed to be said on the subject of people offering me unsolicited mansplanations but no, 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 despite this video that I made many many months ago people still see me as someone who needs things explained to them a lot and Despite the fact, or maybe because of the fact, that in the last year or so I have tried to make myself a lot more approachable and available on social media, so really anyone who messages me will get a response, I kind of hoped that would help people to get an idea of what I was like. And now I like to think of myself as a relatively well-educated person, but the more available I've made myself online, the more I have been the recipient of unsolicited advice from many people who clearly do not see me as a relatively well-educated individual. Now, I don't know what I can do about this, but I know what I have done about this, and this is getting quite angry with people online explaining incredibly simple things to me, and sometimes explaining things to me that are actually part of my job, although quite often not part of theirs. No, it makes me quite infuriated, so I thought I would make just a little video about things I really don't need explained to me. There are probably many things I do need explained to me, but if I want those things explained, I will go and find someone in my life who can explain them. I have many people in my life who give me advice that I ask for, but I really would love it if people stopped giving me advice that I hadn't asked for. So I thought I'd just make a brief video of things I really don't need advice about, unless I ask. First of all, I don't need advice from strangers online about how to be a model. I've been a model for 16 years. Every year, I have been busier. I don't need you to tell me at all anything about being a model, unless you are also a model who's maybe been modeling more successfully than me or for longer than me. And I specifically do not require you to tell me when my career will be over because if I'd listened to the people who told me these things, I would have retired the year I started, which is when I was 25, because many people at that time were telling me that 25 was the cutoff age for being a model. Similarly, at 30, if I'd listened to people, I would have stopped modeling. Now I'm 41 and I am busier than ever. So really, if you are a photographer who is going to hire me, please do not, during the shoot, tell me that probably 35 is the maximum age for a model because I'm here, I'm six years older than that, and I don't want to hear it because it's rubbish. Similarly, I do not need to be told by anyone other than a more experienced rigger than myself how to tie up models. I know how to tie up models because I've been doing it for a decade. There are better riggers than me in this world. Of course there are. There are many, many of them and they are more than welcome to tell me, especially if they think I'm doing something dangerous. Do I need someone online who has never tied anyone up to the best of my knowledge telling me? No, no I don't and I do not like it and in fact because my husband is also a rigger and I know he does not ever get people telling him these things, it makes me a little paranoid that it's because I'm a girl and that does not make me feel very pleased. It's true that I have had people mansplain things to me who are not men, but I have to say that over the last year in which I have had many, many, many things mansplained at me, the large majority of people who have done the mansplaining, I'm so sorry to say it, have been men. So I don't know what I'm meant to think. It does seem to be a thing that men do to women and it's horrible. Thank you to all the men who don't do it to me or to other women. I really appreciate it and honestly 
I don't know what to do about it other than make videos telling people please not to do this. I do not need your advice about whether it is advisable to drive abroad. It may not be advisable as a woman to drive abroad. Maybe women driving abroad get into all sorts of awful accidents. However, I have been modelling professionally, internationally, for 16 years and to date I have never even had a minor incident in a rental car or in fact in my own car. No, I am a safe, wonderful driver despite being a woman and yes I can drive on the other side of the road in New York. I know that sounds staggering but I actually can despite my vagina. Can you imagine that? Has a man in the history of this world ever been told, oh my God, be careful, don't drive abroad because you're a man? No, they have not. I think I can pretty much guarantee that. My husband's come in in the middle of my ranty and it doesn't matter where you are, you're allowed to be here because it's your trip as well. I'm just ranting to my camera. Here's my husband. He never gets things mansplained to him, except when people think that his Twitter account is run by me is depressingly true. I'm and very then, sorry about it. In those situations, what do people mansplain at you? Anything they feel like. Brilliant. Anything and everything. And the tone of the tone of voice, such as you can read via text, but you know the tone of conversation changes entirely. It's much more patronising, like you don't know anything and I can't do anything. Do they tell you your photography's getting on well? Your photography's getting on really well. No, because they assume the photographer's a man. <laughs> Oh, which it is. Fuck. Do you want to come and join me for the rest of my rant? Um, come and join me, right. Howell Bear. And the sunset was very nice. Oh! Howell doesn't like me to call him Howell Bear in public. Have you called me Howell Bear on the damn video? I just did. You edit that bit out. <laughs> okay! He's so not going to. <laughs> Hackling like a witch. <laughs> okay. Another thing I don't need explained to me is the advisability of renting out property. The reason I don't need it explained to me from someone random on Twitter is that I did extensive research with people who actually know about this before I started renting out Imagine property. Imagine that. Yes, extensive. I listened to podcasts and nothing but podcasts on property for two years. So having a random man on Twitter tell me, oh, it's modern day slavery. What do you even mean? I don't even know what it means. No. I asked him and he cited some 19th century philosopher. Oh, fuck. Like, I used to be a tenant, as many of us were. I was very grateful for having landlords. Now I am a landlord and I try to treat people really well. I do not need someone who is not my tenant telling me it's a bad thing to do. If you are a person on Twitter who is about to tell me not to rent out my property, shh, just shh, shh, okay. I do not need you to tell me about how HMRC investigations are run. The reason I don't need to know this is because I've just been investigated and if you've been telling me about this it's because you have been watching me getting investigated in real time because I've been tweeting about it. I don't need you now that the investigation is over I don't need you to tell me how it runs because I know I can tell you you cannot tell me unless you've been investigated more recently than me which you haven't. That's all. And finally, I think it's a point worth mentioning. Yes, it's the next day. <laughs> Howl's gone. But I wanted to continue this because yesterday I ended up saying some things that were rather more angry than I wanted to really say. So I want to conclude this video by saying that it is infuriating when people lecture you on things that I probably don't need you to tell me about because clearly they're things that I do on a professional basis. But I think that one of the more insidious things about this lecturing stroke mansplaining is that it takes quite an obtuse person to lecture a professional model on how to be a professional model if they are not themselves a professional model. But I do see quite a lot and I experience quite a lot of people just making an assumption based really on nothing that they are more knowledgeable than the person they are about to speak to and when they're speaking to a comparative stranger I think that's quite a dangerous thing to do 
Now, I have lost my mind over it because it happens to me so much, but I guess this is the sort of thing that happens to a lot of people on some kind of regular basis. And I, I would like, rather than just rant at you, I would like to maybe do my bit to make it a bit less likely that it's gonna happen to people in future. Because I know from my personal experience, it's a really horrible thing when people assume that you know basically nothing. So I've been thinking a lot about it and I think probably the thing to do, especially when you're speaking to people you don't know very well, is ask rather than tell. Ask someone whether they know about a subject before telling them all of your acquired knowledge on that subject. So I'm going to talk about an example that happened to me recently. People keep asking me about it and I want to explain from my point of view why this is such a unpleasant type of situation for me. So a few months ago someone retweeted something which I thought was quite hateful about sex workers, white sex workers specifically. It was the fact that it was about sex workers at all that bothered me. I tweeted an objection to say I thought that was quite hateful language and they objected to my objection and wrote a blog post in which they said, that their retweet had sparked defensive reactions from white people. Now, I cannot deny I am white. As it happens, I do not believe that my reaction was because I was white. My reaction was because you can't call a whole group of people in this situation sex workers worthless. That's awful especially towards a group of people who are discriminated against. So that was the issue and we tried to resolve it. And in correspondence, this person said to me that they had done lots of reading about black people and the discrimination against them and they couldn't expect other people to see racial discrimination in the same context with the implication that they couldn't expect that because obviously I wouldn't be as well read. Now, this is a very troubling assumption to me. I don't know what it is about me that would make someone assume that I don't read anything. Specifically, I don't read anything by black people. As far as I know, I am white. I don't have any black relations in my immediate family. But I do come from a religious minority. So I do have, as it happens, a little practical experience because my whole educational career was spent as part of a religious minority, a very visible religious minority, which kept singling me out as different. The religious minority I was in, they were persecuted during the Second World War. They were put in concentration camps along with the Jews and the Poles and the LGBT people and the sex workers. So actually, I do have a little, a little understanding of what it's like to be discriminated against. For clarity, I learned the following things as a Jehovah's Witness child. I was told that Armageddon was coming and before I reached adulthood, murderous hordes of people would be likely to arrive to kill me and my family. We had numerous seminars on how to withstand torture, including graphic descriptions of the type of torture that Jehovah's Witnesses in South America in present day had experienced. And we were treated to lengthy descriptions of what had happened to Jehovah's Witnesses in Nazi concentration camps during the Second World War. So although I don't know what it's like firsthand to be discriminated against for something you've not chosen, like your ethnicity, I have had plenty of first-hand experience about how it feels to be scared that the rest of the world is against you because you've been taught that it's full of people who want to kill you because of your religion. And I have plenty of experience of being excluded from things that the regular population get to enjoy as a matter of course. Things like Christmas, birthday celebrations, Easter, pop music, television, free time at weekends, voting, and wearing casual clothes. Now, I don't know what it's like to be black, but I've read lots of black authors' work. Now, obviously, I don't expect anyone to be impressed by me for reading the work of authors who are not of the same ethnicity as me. Why on earth wouldn't I? As it happens, I come from a family of published authors, so what I have had in my life is I have been surrounded by books, not all of them, obviously, by white people, and I have sought out books about racial injustice myself, because clearly it's an important topic, and the idea of just being underestimated like that by someone who'd assume that because of some of my characteristics that I wouldn't have been interested in what a black person would have to say 
about discrimination and racial injustice, I, I find it puzzling and hurtful. And I just think it is an example of plowing in, assuming you have a level of knowledge that the person you're talking to doesn't have. So I think that when it comes to debating with someone, when it comes to disagreeing with someone, it's probably especially dangerous to assume that they are coming from a place of ignorance that you're not coming from. Because maybe the person I was arguing with, and I, had read the same texts by black authors, but we had come to a different conclusion about how okay it is for one group that's discriminated against to use hate speech against another group that's discriminated against. It isn't, necessarily, because one person hasn't done any research. And yet, daily on my Twitter feed at the moment, I feel as though I see the evidence of people making those kind of assumptions, not just towards me, towards other women and definitely towards other models. So if I can have any positive impact on the way in which people talk to professional models and maybe women generally, I guess I would just like to say, as I said earlier, rather than assuming ignorance, why not ask her if she knows about a subject before lecturing her with what you consider to be your huge wisdom. Because you might find that she has a surprising level of knowledge on some subjects that you hadn't considered. You might even find that she knows more than you. So that's all I want to say. Let's just be gentle with each other and let's be careful with each other because being mansplained at once is really no big deal, it's just a funny story. But honestly, I can tell you from experience, having this happen to you day after day after day, it kind of wears you down. Um, and I'd really love it to stop. So thank you. Yes, I will be back next month with more ranting or possibly information about modelling. I really don't know. I have many ideas, too many ideas. Thank you, as always, for supporting me. Please don't mansplain anything in the comments. Please don't. Please don't, because I will actually lose my rag. I don't know what that means. Lose my rag. Funny expression, isn't it? I try not to use cliches, and then they come out and I realise I don't know what they mean.